This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups. And my guest today is Natalia Sanchez. Natalia, thanks for joining us today on Rising Tide. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. So please share a quick bio of who is Natalia Sanchez. Oh, man. Who, who am I? I've been asking myself that my <laughs> whole life. You've got the next 42 minutes to, yeah. to share that. So. <laughs> yeah. How much time do we have? Um, so I, who am I? I am a, a woman who does you know, leadership development and, and business strategy. That's kind of the work that I do. But um, in general, I like to say that I'm, I'm somebody who's deeply moved to and called to help empower people to live into the best versions of themselves and also experience the greatest amount of growth in their lives, whether whether that's personally or professionally. Um, my journey started, you know, here in San Diego. So as we were chatting, you know, I live in San Diego, but I grew up in the Bay Area and um, I grew up on like, you know, it's S Silicon Valley and the Bay Area is kind of glamorized now as, you know, being like, you know, the world of tech and where all of this, um, all of this amazing growth and entrepreneurialism has happened and um, technological advancement. But I grew up on the east side of San Jose. And so, you know, my, my beginnings started in a very rough kind of introduction to, to both uh, life and also to adulthood. And so, you know, when I came to San Diego, I was blown away by um, just how incredible the experience is here. Like people are happy and, you know, there's, it's sunny, it's warm, the weather's always amazing. Uh, graduated from UCSD and um, I traveled around the world and really got a sense of what education is like. I taught English abroad. And in, in that experience, I realized that education, I think, stifles self-awareness. Mm. And so when I came back after traveling abroad, I, I really got invested in learning more about myself and, and more about personal and professional development, found myself in business management a few years later, um, realized that a lot of people in business don't know anything about business. Um, and they also don't know anything about leadership. And I learned that personally, because I realized I didn't know anything about leadership. And so that started my, my journey of just understanding more about the, the relationship between success in business and, and leadership. And it's been, it's sort of just become an obsession of mine, which has landed me in the work that I do today. So is this primarily online or is this primarily the, the, the business the work you do is, is like online or is it face to face? Or, I mean, are you primarily working with individual coaching clients or these group sessions? What's the, what's kind of the background? Yeah. So that's actually a really great question. It actually started out. So I've been doing this now for, for two and a half years. And in my first year, it was all one-on-one -on -one clients. And um, I sort of moved from the one-on-one -on -one client experience into group coaching and was doing a combination of group coaching and one-on-one. -on -one. And what I what I realized was that I really missed working within or an organization. So I went from, from business management and working within a business to, and leading a team to then just being sort of a solopreneur and kicking off my own business and um, helping other people grow, grow their businesses. And I love, you know, while I love coaching and I love helping people sort of uh, unpack the puzzle that, that is, you know, business. Uh, I miss feeling, I miss the level of, of involvement and also the level of connection, um, but also the complexity of working within an organization. Mm. And so um, at the beginning of this year, I had an amazing opportunity to be contracted with a, uh, a SaaS company that specializes in virtual remote environments. And I started doing business strategy and marketing strategy with them. And it sort of just evolved um, to where my work with them became more hands-on. And so now I'm actually, um, you know, working with them on a daily basis. And I, it was actually something that I had set in plan. I don't know if you're a believer in the law of attraction, but I set up, you know, an intention at the beginning of this year that I really wanted to work within organizations to help organizations grow. And so this was really kind of a manifestation of that intention. And it's been really amazing to have do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, but also um, still have be within an organization working with them to help them uh, grow and expand as well. So people just generally don't, you know, just wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to transition into a, into a life coach or into a business coach. What would, what would you say was, was really the trigger that caused you to want to kind of step into and transition into this? 
Yeah. So that started in my, when I was in business management. So I actually found, I, it was a crazy thing. I, um, I was working for a fitness franchise. So my, my beginnings in management were in fitness business management, and I was just an instructor. Um, there was a, a brief period where I was, I had a plan. I had this, you know, grand plan, uh, in my twenties to get my master's in, um, I had actually applied for a master's program and been accepted to the American university in Cairo for a dual master's in public policy and comparative education. And I decided at like kind of two weeks before I was supposed to head out to Egypt that I didn't want to do it. I was like, you know what? It was right when the Arab spring was taking place, like mm. the military taking over the government. There was like all these riot riots taking place. And I was like, you know what? I don't think that's what I want to do with my life right now. And so that led me into, uh, at the time, you know, I have a, a strong athletic background. And so I was like, you know what? I've, I've always appreciated health and wellness. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take up uh, becoming a fitness professional until I figure out my, what my next step is. It just so happened that that led me to my next step, which was really great. Um, and along that journey, I was hired um, by a fitness franchise and I became, a, a, my, it was my first time experience in management. And I got my butt kicked learning, learning everything that I didn't know that I thought I knew. And it was a very, um, it was, it was, a, it was a reality check for me. And so in adopting this new business, um, you know, learning everything top to bottom about business management, but then also recognizing the difference. That's where I really came to understand the difference between business management and leadership. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been responsible for developing, you know, hiring, recruiting, hiring, training, and developing a team. And um, it put me face to face with myself. And it was, it, again, it, was, it wasn't pretty. Like I spent a lot of time during that experience crying, going home, crying, you know, feeling like I was, um, I was failing at a lot of things. And so it forced me to make a decision about whether or not I wanted to become, to embrace the struggle and to become stronger and to become better at what I did or to give up and say, you know what, this whole management thing isn't for me. And so I, I decided to lean in. And it was during that time that I was, again, just kind of, uh, I became obsessed with recognizing the connection between personal development and professional development. But then also because I was, I was the manager at the time, I recognized so much, I recognized the disconnect between the owner and myself. So he was an absentee owner and I was, uh, um, again, just kind of running everything, operating the entire business for him. Um, but it was the first time he had really been in, you know, in, owning a business like this. And so there was so many things that he didn't even know um, and that he didn't understand. And there was so much money invested in just figuring, like sorting out all the problems that came up as a result of this um, lack of awareness. And I just realized so much money is being spent um, fixing problems that could really be solved in advance or at least prepared better, prepared sure. for in advance. And so it just became my mission. I just set out to, I, after that, I went and, and uh, managed an, another fitness franchise, saw the same things happening, was connected with a lot of other managers experiencing the same issues and business owners experiencing the same issues. And I thought, you know what, like, I really want to help people become better at business. And I want to see people become more successful in business. And so I just decided I committed my life to that. And I started a business myself that serves that very purpose. So let me, let me take a little segue and little, dive a little deeper right here because yeah. you, you really said something. You said a couple of things that, that really kind of generated a kind of a, a trigger in my, in my mind. But so you said, you know, I was kind of, kind of, you had to face reality here and you had to, you had to make a choice. Am I going to kind of, you know, fight or flee here? You know, the, right. the whole, the whole, I guess that, that conundrum that we're faced with. So what was, and and this is this I don't want to catch you off guard on this, but I'm really curious. Was was there something in your upbringing, something in your you know early family life, childhood, whatever that caused you to say, "Hey, I, I, we're going to fight. We're going to stand, and we're going to I'm going to lean in here." So, uh, kind of, I mean, nothing's wasted in the economy of our life. And you know, you just said, "Hey, it was such a." such a stark difference, you know, San Diego and where you grew up, that type of thing. So yeah, what some of the character things that, that caused you to say, Hey, I'm a, I'm fighting here. Yeah. Um, you really, first of all, so well articulated. I, I love that you said there's nothing wasted in the economy of our life. And, um, I, there's so many things I would say that contributed to that moment in the way that I chose to make that decision. And I think, you know, one is that, I, I've been, 
my upbringing wasn't easy. Um, I grew up, you know, my mom is a single mom and she, she's, it was crazy. Like when I think about her story, you know, she graduated, she put herself through medical school. Um, wow. she's yeah. And you know, she's a Mexican American woman, you know, first to graduate college, only one, only woman, only person actually to graduate college in her family. Um, and she put herself through school and, and uh, let alone she became a doctor. Um, and when she came to, we were, she, she's from California and we lived in New Mexico for a little bit before we moved back to California. And, you know, with my father, um, she, they, they got a divorce when I was really young. I think we were, I was eight, my brother was six and, um, that's, it was just the three of us, you know, and I, she worked so hard and just watching her like deal with the pressures of not only being a physician, uh, you know, a, a, a woman as a physician owning her own private practice, so a business owner herself, but then on top of that, raising two children um, in an incredibly fast paced environment, you know, growing up again in the Bay Area, like we were always, there were always constant challenges, but she, she really fought so hard to provide us with as much as she could. And I think I was, I've always been inspired by her grit, by her resilience, by her willingness to just work hard and to provide. And so I think, you know, my mom's never been a quitter. And so that has very much informed me in the way that I make decisions in my life. Like we, when things get hard, like, you know, we always say like when the tough, you know, when it, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Absolutely. You know? And so yeah, wow. that is very much like one of, you know, the, one of our family mottos. And so, um, the next thing I would say is that I was also, I started out, out as an athlete very early on. Um, I started playing softball when I was eight or nine. And so I have, you know, it was, I played for 12 years and, I had a very high ambitions as a, an athlete. I wanted to play um, Olympic, you know, at the Olympic level. And unfortunately, because of an injury, I never had the opportunity to to uh, go that far. But that being said, you know, for be this ACL time, or MCL. No, actually, it wasn't. It, I, I feel like that would probably be a better story. But uh, I actually fractured a vertebrae in my spine and had mm. a pretty bad injury. Yeah, that's a different. That's a totally different topic, and we can touch. But on were that you later. safe? Yes, I was. I was okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, were you safe on the slide that caused the? No, <laughs> and it was actually a cliff <laughs> that I fell oh, wow. off. Yeah, it's a different story. It's a good story, um, but nonetheless, you know, my time in um, playing softball, you know, I you learn how to how to be tough. I played year round for twelve years, so you know, like that's tournaments every weekend that's practice every day that's work you know playing with being injured and knowing how to recover from an injury so I think you know being an athlete informed informed that decision as well like you know you, you just you don't just quit you know you, you keep you keep going so you either play third or short or maybe outfield uh, I was I played short and I the three main positions shortstop pitcher and catcher catcher that's a, that's a crazy position I I actually uh I'm assuming we're, we're talking fast pitch here. I, I, I played fast pitch as a, even as an adult. So it's a game that I absolutely love. So yes, um, I, I'm, I'm sure not at the level you played at because it, what's really I, a very quick story. I was in college and I'd played baseball all, virtually all my life and, and had just started playing fast pitch softball. And, and there was a girl that was, that was pitching for the, the university team. Uh -huh. We were in the gym. I was probably playing basketball or something. And she was over there just throwing. And I said, Hey, I'll catch you, you know. She threw the first pitch and knocked me on my can and I'm going, <laughs> I am not catching you ever again. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, could she throw the ball? Yeah, no, that's actually a um, funny story because I'm pretty sure when I was, you know, in my 20s, you know, end of end of high school, early 20s, uh I think I had two boyfriends that volunteered for that and they never after the never first time, again. Never again. <laughs> And you know what? What's funny is that you know baseball players say, "Oh, I can hit that," and they'll get up there, and it, it just looks like a BB. You know, yeah, they're, they're like, yeah. you, "No, you can't." It's different you know, when you're only absolutely. you know sixty feet away. You know, <laughs> but, I mean, baseball is ninety feet, I think, from the mound to the from the mound to the plate. Yeah, yeah but, you're yeah. you're certainly certainly a lot closer in fast pitch, but for sure. Yeah, but yeah I <laughs> didn't mean to chase a little segment, but it's a game. I love the game, so I yeah, I really admire people that can play it at a very high level. So, awesome. well done, Thank well you. done. But so, yeah, just. Uh, Touch on a little bit the just the the um, the transition that's happened maybe within the last year. You said that you know you started working within kind of a, a corporate environment. Again, I guess 
kind of circle back in a corporate environment. So sort, yeah, how has that been different than, than say doing one-on-one or, or even group coaching? Yeah. So, um, I, I opened myself up. So this is actually something that I think is really valuable for anybody who's, you know, in the setting out to be an entrepreneur, start their own business, especially in a service capacity, like coaching or consulting, you know, I think we tend to think that it needs to look a certain way, or we put an expectation on ourselves that if I don't do it like this, then that means that I've failed. Um, my first year in coaching was actually very successful. And I, I, what I realized though, at the end of that first year was that there was a part of me that again, while I really loved the, um, the way that I could show up to, to, to help and to guide my clients, a part of me wasn't being fulfilled in, um, at the level of complexity that I was really used to being um, immersed in, right? So when you're in business management, especially when you're responsible, you know, gen- a general manager role where you're sort of responsible for the entire operations, you know, there's your every single day, you're sort of in the fire and you're used to being, you know, working at a level of intensity that is pretty consistent. And so moving out of that, I, I just felt I just felt like I had was letting off the gas, even though that wasn't true, you know, doing it for myself and building my own business. It wasn't, it wasn't true. It just felt different. Um, and so at the end of my first year of coaching, I, I really just had to think like, well, what would make this feel better for me? Like what opportunity would I want, um, to have that would, that would make this more worthwhile, more in alignment with what I'm looking for, like to feel in my own work. And it was, again, being involved in an organiz- at an organizational level. And so being able to influence an organization and work within an organization to be able to help guide that organization to success. And so um, I, with, with Rebella, um, I was thankfully given the opportunity to be, be a contractor with them. So I'm still able to grow my own business and sustain my coaching, you know, with my own client, one-on-one clients, but again, feel, have the involvement with the team on the, on the Verbella side. And Verbella, um, is their situation is very unique in that they were they're they were acquired by a larger organization, a very successful, like billion dollar organization. And, but so that while that, while there's kind of like already established, Rebella is still in its startup phase. So it turned, it's, it really has turned into this amazing opportunity for me to learn what it's like to be guiding an organization, guiding a business at the organizational level, um, in startup tech, right. In SaaS. And so SaaS is software as a service. Right. And so, right. I, um, it's been, it's been a roller coaster ride again, kind of learning what I don't know, but then also again, feeling that, that, um, momentum again, and the intensity of like, you know, the rapid changes that come at an organizational level when you're, when you're in it at, like, at that pace. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really great doing that. And you just um, missed the game. Yeah, exactly. You missed the competition. That's, you, yes. you've got to, you've got to be in the game. You, you yeah. got to, is this a distributed workforce that works for this company or are they primarily on site? No. So again, another huge blessing because I couldn't, I, I honestly have been working remote now again for almost three years. And mm-hmm. so I couldn't have imagined, you know, part of that vision that I had was like, it needs to be in a remote capacity. Like, cause I just know that I can't have, I, I wouldn't be able to commit to something that required me to go to work every day. So thankfully the, the cool thing about Rebella is that they're entirely remote and that is mm-hmm. actually what they specialize in. So the very platform that Rebella has created is a 3d fully immersive virtual environment uh, for remote employees for remote workforces. And so um, the parent company that acquired Verbella, which is EXP Realty, um, they are an entirely remote uh, organization. And they, wow. so they have, yeah, and they have um, as a part of their organization, I'm, I think it's over 4,000 um, employees and 22,000 um, agents and that are all using this virtual platform um, to for their operations. And so I get, you know, again, within working within Verbella One, it's fully remote for me, which is fantastic. And our whole team is distributed, but we get to bring this platform to other distributed businesses and organizations to help them do the same thing with their, with their organization. So it's really, you better good. be careful. They're going to, they're going to ask you to stay as their sales rep, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not going to yeah. be coaching internally anymore. You're going to be their, sales, know, be their yeah. spokesperson. So exactly. Yeah. You touch on this a couple of times. I kind of want to drill a little deeper on that. This, the whole idea. I mean, like, you know, there are, there are two distinct kind of roles you've mentioned. You mentioned kind of the manager role and, and leaders and, you know, companies need both. You know, you need mm-hmm. to have managers, need to have leaders, but what would you say would be really the distinction between these two or how would you kind of unpack those? 
Yeah, great, brilliant question. It's been coming up so much uh, in the last month or so as I've been, you know, in a position to be able to reflect on these things. And I think the biggest distinction um, or distinguishing factor is that, you know, management oversees and manages processes and systems, you know, and or procedures, you know, they're, they're responsible for overseeing and managing the procedures, the systems, the processes, and leadership is about guiding, developing, nurturing people. And I think that, you know, oftentimes we, people, you hear the phrase, or at least recently I've heard the phrase, oh, this person wasn't doing a good job in their role because they weren't being managed. And I, this, to the individual that I was speaking to, I said, no, it's not that they weren't being managed, is it? it's that they weren't being properly led. Wow. And I think that- That is so you know, true. Unfortunately, I see so much. Preach that, it, sister. Yeah, I know. This is something I get really fired up about and I'm very passionate about because it's, it's something, um, what I'm seeing is that, one, people think that business management or management in general is like a catch-all, right? That it includes everything and it doesn't. Um, management is an immense amount of responsibility. Um, but again, it's, it's really making sure that the business itself is, be, is being led in, in the right direction, right? Like everything is working and being dialed in so that the business can move forward, so that the business can maintain momentum and grow. Um, leadership is, is a way of overseeing, connecting with the people that are, that are literally making the business move. And so I think we, we tend to say, well, those people, if they're not doing their job, that it's, that it's um, a lack of management, right? Or that it's, it's, it's a problem within the individual. And maybe the individual is having a problem. Maybe they are struggling with a certain aspect of, of their role or their responsibility. Something isn't being um, communicated correctly. But what I see too much is this blaming down, right? Like, oh, the t it's the team's fault or it's in this individual's fault. And instead of saying, okay, where, how can I give this person everything that they need in order to be successful, right? How can I ensure that they are set up for success? And then if I see that they aren't showing up in the way that I'm at least expecting them to as a manager or as a leader, where, where, what is my ownership in that? And I think what I'm not seeing enough of in the business space is enough ownership and self-awareness mm -hmm. Um, where someone is saying, you know what, maybe I'm responsible for the fact that my team is failing right now. And I think the, the most critical question that somebody can ask themselves is, have I done my due diligence? Have I done everything that has been within my power to set my team up so that they can perform the way that I need them to, the way that the business needs them to in order to be successful? I, one thing that you, you touched on there too, and I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth so you can frame this however you want to, but the, just the whole idea of almost like a, on the back end as well. So I'm thinking about if, if I have led well, if I've laid the expectations out, if I have given, resourced you as much as, I, as you needed to be resourced to be successful, and yet you still are not successful, then that, that really is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, in essence, the, the employee has, has you know, not done what they were clearly asked to do mm -hmm. with clear expectations, with adequate resources, with, mm -hmm. you know, adequate time and encouragement and, yeah. and training and whatever. So in essence, they, they, they really have kind of set their own destiny, you know, and yeah. it's, and it's very clear probably to them as well, you know, that yeah, absolutely. As, I, I have, I, it's, it's on me. I haven't met the expectations and I can't blame the fact that, that my manager was poor, or that I was not led well or whatever. So I really love, yeah, I love that distinction. So, yeah. And I think it goes, I mean, to your point, I think it's one of those things that um, is sort of like, it comes full circle, right? Yeah, so for sure. um, I think when somebody is a leading from a place of empowering their, their workforce, you know, the workforce will know you will, yeah. you can tell because they will feel um, there will be a high level of one, either defensiveness, you know, like where they don't want to take the, the actual employee will not want to take responsibility for, for what they haven't been fulfilling on in terms of, you know, their role and position. Um, or there will be a high level of understanding and saying, you know what, I, I understand that you have given me everything, all the tools to succeed. Mm -hmm. And a proper leader is also, is also a mentor. Mm -hmm. And so if they're, you know, if you're hiring the right people and you're hiring people with high emotional intelligence, you know, you, there will be before the point of, of firing somebody even comes, you know, comes up, there will be plenty of opportunities to, to, to guide and mentor your team so that they know that you're on their side. 
And so if they know that you're on, on, on their side and every once in a while there's bad seeds, then you'll know right away who that bad seed is and know yeah. that it really is not a matter of leadership at that point. It was just a, a matter of bad selection, right? Or just they've reached the limit of their, their upper limit of their growth with that leader or with that company. Right, right. And, and it, it's, it's also a matter of fit. I mean, it clearly exactly. you know, displays, is this a good fit or not moving forward? And then, then yes. we, we need to act on that. So yes. You, I, I could, I could ask you follow up questions all day long because I mean everything you said is triggering you know more, more questions and, and things well, like that. But I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fire away. But I'd, I'd really want to drill down again about the whole idea of you know, you, you bring so much to the table from not just a, you know, business training and and leadership development and things like that, but also, you know, you are an entrepreneur yourself. So, what is what? Are the are the key traits, and as you know, as we're kind of leaning into the the, the whole area of this this interview that I love called the Rising Tide Micro Course. But if you can kind of drill down on that about you know what does it take to you know what what does success look like? Uh, frame that however you want to. But I think our listeners are really curious about you know what are the key steps, the key you know elements that that have to be in place for for you to be successful. Right. Yeah. So brilliant. And I love that you do this. I think um, this is something that I feel like mo I wish other people did in their, in their interview process. Um, so where to start? Uh, I have going back to sort of the, the, the story and the experience that we were talking about earlier. I have worked for entrepreneurs and business owners. I have been a manager of, of businesses. And then again, I've, I've, built my own business. Mm -hmm. And I think I've learned being in, in those different roles, I've, I've learned, I would say three things that are essential for anybody's success at, at any level, right? Like whether you're somebody helping somebody grow a business, right? Or whether you're somebody who is actually growing your own business. And I would say the first thing that is absolutely fundamental and goes back to the, to our conversation just now about leadership is that leadership begins with understanding yourself, right? To be a strong leader, it begins with self, strong self-leadership, and strong self-leadership ultimately comes down to a high level of self-awareness and a high level of emotional intelligence. The only way that you, we, I think if you were to ask anybody, you know, like how high would you say your emotional intelligence is? I think we would all rate ourselves high, right? In other words, I don't think most of us, if asked that question, would say, yeah, I'm pretty low on the emotional intelligence level. I think we like to think of ourselves as being emotionally intelligent. Um, but when you step into a leadership role and the thing about leadership and, you know, to, 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 to refine even the difference between management and leadership, right? Is that management is, is a title, leadership is, is a behavior, right? Leadership is something that you take on, you embody leadership. Anybody can be a leader. Um, doesn't matter what your title or your position is or your relationship to anybody else, right? Leadership is just something you choose to live into and that you choose to embody. But when you have the higher level of responsibility that you have within either an organization or even again, as you're growing your own business, as your level of responsibility increases, your leadership, the, the need for leadership grows. And if you have not, if you've stepped into a, a role of responsibility where that has not forced you to cultivate strong leadership skills, you are going to be forced to see yourself. Leadership reveals far more about the leader than it does about the oh, people that sure. they're leading. Absolutely. And I would say that was the hardest lesson that I had to learn because when I first got into management, um, I thought, I, I honestly did think the problem was my team. I was like, what's wrong with these guys? Well, why can't they show up the way I show up? Right. And it was like, oh, the reason they're not showing up the way I show up is because they're their own people. They're, they, they think differently. They feel differently. They know different things, you know? So I had to figure out how to show up best for them and, and how to stop thinking about it as what they can do for me. Right. And so I really had to go inward. So again, I would say the first thing is recognizing that leadership is going to reveal to you who you really are mm -hmm. and all the areas that you have, have to grow in within yourself. And I would say, start taking down the list of the areas that you find you're struggling in the most, even in, in the areas that you feel like you're being tested the most by other people. Um, the tendency that you, that anybody might feel to, to say, Oh, this person is doing this thing and it's not what I want them to do. Take note of that and say, how can I take ownership? ownership of that, right? And start seeking out resources to help you, um, again, elevate your leadership skill, elevate your, your level of self-awareness, um, identify what your triggers are, like the things that make you angry, the things that make you want to fly off the handle, um, the things that make you sensitive, right? Like, 
um, knowing what those things are and then seeking healing around those things, or again, a profound sense of understanding of what's causing the root of what's causing those things. So um, I always uh, support anybody who goes to therapy. I myself have you know, done plenty of, of work in therapy and um, it has only led to me showing up better for others. So again, all of that is, is incredibly crucial. Say number two, if you're going to be successful in building a business um, or again, leading somebody else's business, you have to have a plan for what that success is going to look like, right? If you want to scale anything, whether it's zero to one or whether it's one to a hundred, you have to know what that scale is going to look like, right? And then from there, you have to be flexible. So have a plan that is going to serve as the foundation, um, the guiding, you know, I would say it's the guidepost. It's the compass by which you decide that you're going to take action and move forward in. Um, and then understand that, that you're always, there's always going to be things that you don't know. And so as a result, you're going to have to recalibrate a lot. You know, navigating a business and growing, scaling a business is all about being able to uh, adapt and attack, right? And to recalibrate when things don't work out according to the initial plan. But then again, reformat the plan and then move forward. So I think I see so many people that are that are like, "Yep, we're going to grow a business, and we're just we're going to we're going to do this." And it's like, okay, but how how are you going to go about doing that? And what does success look like? right? You want to see success. You want the business to grow. You want to, you know, you want to have a, a six figure business. Okay. Well, let's break down. Like, what do you have to do? You know, there was a great quote in uh, think and grow rich. I'm sure you're familiar with that book, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's the, if you, the matter, the amount of success that you want to achieve in life is, um, is comparable to the amount that you're willing to give in order to achieve that success. Right. So you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to give in exchange for the success that I want to have? Right. And then create a plan around that. Super important. Um, the, the last thing, the third thing, um, and I, I want to highlight this because sales, you know, everybody has like, they either love sales or they hate sales. <laughs> and I think for anybody, again, whether you're helping someone else grow a business or whether you are a business owner, um, or an entrepreneur seeking to develop your own business, um, you've got to get comfortable with sales. And I think we, we tend to feel for people who feel uncomfortable around sales, it's usually because they're just focusing on, they, they understand sales to be about money. Um, they think that sales is about, it's a, it's an exchange, you know, I give you this, they give me that, you know, and I, there's something about that exchange that feels uncomfortable. Um, a lot of times that comes around not fully understanding either your own worth, um, or understanding the true value of the thing that you're, that you're giving, right. That you're, that you're the product that you have or the service that you have, you don't fully understand or intimately know or believe in the value of the very thing that you're trying to get people to pay for, you're going to have a hard time convincing people to pay for it. Okay. So first thing is you got to know your value. You got to know the value of the product and service, and you've got to believe in that and um, be very comfortable talking about that. But most importantly, right, once you get all that other stuff out of the way, the most important thing is that sales is about connecting with people. Mm -hmm. It's not about making money, right? If the money is the, is the benefit, right? The money is like the, uh, it's the outcome of a, of a connection. And if you have a strong connection that has, that has again been built on the foundation of the value that has, um, been based on a matter of caring and trusting and wanting to serve at a high level. Um, and that ultimately delivers on that value, right? That's if that value is evident to the other person and it's a right fit that's when the sale happens, right? But that everything in between there is all about connection. And again, it's about trusting. It's about knowing it's about, um, rapport building, you know, it's about strong communication and it's about your heart being in the right place. So if you want to elevate your sales, get your heart right. Right. And understand, understand what your product is, understand what the needs of your client are and really understand nobody should know the needs of your client better than you and then have a conversation that is, is heart centered and that really seeks to help them get what they want. And that is the key to sales. And I would say of those, those are the three things. Wow. What a, what a great synopsis. I mean, I, as you were, you were talking, I'm thinking, how do I make these in, in cute little bullet points? And I, I mean, it's <laughs> know yourself, know your plan and know your value. I mean, Ooh, what, I a, like that. what a, what a great, uh, you know, three keys to be, three essentials to, to be successful in really anything that, that you, you have in mind, but primarily in, in starting a business. But thank you for sharing that and just, you know, kind of boiling that down and really wrapping up well today. And, and uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you about as we, as we wrap up? Hmm. 
No, you know, uh, I mean, I think stress, like maybe something about how we handle stress, you know, um, I'd say don't, one of the most important lessons I've learned this year, you know, in my evolution and journey as a, as an entrepreneur and as a coach is, um, you can't take yourself so seriously all the time, you know, like get used to things being hard, get used to things not working out the way you thought they would, um, get used to getting your butt kicked, but also allow yourself to laugh and have fun. Don't forget that you're a human being that has feelings and emotions and needs to be nurtured, like nurture yourself, right? Like say the biggest lesson this year is me saying, Hey, I got, I need me time. I need to take mm, care of myself yeah. and nurture myself. And, and then also just play like yeah. uh, this year has been a, a beautiful, um, and to help me learn a beautiful lesson that play is important. Um, so, allow yourself to play let it be fun well i uh we've been we're friends on facebook and and a lot of your pictures on on facebook and the the posts that you make I, you know you're you're laughing in those pictures and i mean, just such a a great picture and just really summarizing exactly what you just said about you know uh we're not going to take life too seriously we're not going to take but we are we're serious about about business but we're certainly also you know going to make sure that we're nurturing our our health and and uh, just well-being in that. But where's the best place that people can find you online? On Facebook. <laughs> on Facebook. I think, oh, yeah, right. I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, admittedly, I haven't been nearly as active on social media this year uh, just because I needed to, to recalibrate. Um, but that being said, you can find me on Facebook, Natalia Diane. Um, I should be, you know, should be one of the first people to pop up with that. Uh, and then on Instagram at Natalia Diane. Um, and then if you want to email me, you know, I'm, I'm so open to emails. I love, I've just, I don't know why lately I've just been on the whole email thing. So please feel free to email me uh, coaching at Natalia Diane.com. And I just want to say like for anybody who has questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. You know, I really, uh, I am about the service and, and just trying to help people like know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to find me on any of those channels and, and reach out. I love, I love supporting people. So. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll make sure that those are in the show notes and Natalia, we just, once again, we just thank you for, for the value you've added to us and just the, the delightful conversation we've had today and, and really just playing your part in helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Thank oh. you again for being on. Kevin, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. You've been an amazing host and it's been, I love you. You really have some great questions. So it's, thank you. I feel honored and very humbled to be here. Thanks again. Take care. You too.